Good afternoon, everybody. I want to stop in here with you for a minute and tell you a little bit about something here. So back when I started trying to do uh, online content and when I started to do my uh, Facebook page, which started out as On the Rise, Faith and Motivation, and now it's Out of the Fire, Faith and Motivation, that's because somebody's got to help somebody get out of the fire. And when I first started doing this, I told myself, hey, I don't want to offend anybody. I want to try to just make it inclusive to everyone and everything. And, you know, that's all fine and well. But since then, I've grown closer to God. God's come into my heart and in my Bible. I spend more time in it. I read in it more. I read in the Bible every day, and it's helped me. And one thing that I've learned since I've been reading in my Bible every day is God did not give us the spirit of fear. He did not give us the spirit to be scared. Whether or not you're in your TV or scared of your TV or something on the radio, your neighbor or whatever it is, we have no reason to fear because we have God. So this is my new thing that I'm going to do every week. I'm going to start doing this. It's called GBFC, God, Bible, Family, and Country. And I can guarantee you that some of you are not going to like what I have to say on here. And I also can guarantee you that I don't really care if you like what I have to say, you don't have to agree with me. As a matter of fact, I expect you not to agree with me. I expect you to give me an alternative. If you've got something better to say, you've got a better reason, whatever it is. So I'm going to start by breaking it down for you today. This first time, just God, Bible, family, and country. Number one, God. God is our creator. He sent his only son here to die for us. So that we could live eternity. Crucified, buried, resurrected. None of these other people's gods are living. You got to have statues. If you got to carry your statue of your God out of a flood, he's not a God. And that's just the way it is. Okay? Bible. These first two things coincide. This Bible right here has been a map for me. It's been a road map. For these past couple years. Every problem that I've had. Whether or not it's with my marriage. With my kids. With work. Whatever it is. No matter what. I've been able to come into God's word. And get that figured out. One way or another. And the more. When you're saved. And when you've asked God to come into your heart. And you have the spirit of Jesus in you. This book. The book. The only book. It will. Talk to you. When I'm reading this Bible now, I can't tell you how many times when I was a kid, when I was in church, when I was doing whatever, that I'd go, I'd read the Bible or somebody be reading the Bible, somebody be preaching, and I wouldn't understand or even care what they had to say. That's not the way it is now. I come across something every single day in this Bible that helps me get through my life. And that brings me to my next thing. So we went through God, we went through Bible, and now we're on to family, okay? Family. You take a look around at all the things that are going on in this world today, whether or not it's letting men use women's bathrooms or vice versa, whatever it is, women in men's sports, and I know that's like a controversial topic and everybody talks about it, but that's just the way it is. And what's got me fired up about that, to be example is, or for an example is, I've seen... Just the other day on the radio, or on the TV, that out in California, they had a little camp, okay? They was having a camp where they sent their daughters, their fifth grade daughters, okay, to this camp. And this camp let the adult males stay in the cabins with the fifth grade girls, unsupervised. They didn't tell the parents about it. The parents didn't know anything about it. And to me... That's just flat out ridiculous, okay? And once they ask the school or once they ask the camp counselors or whoever it is, this organization about it, they said, well, they let the counselors stay in the cabin of which they identify. Well, look, we don't have 75 genders. We don't have 91 genders. We have two genders. God made us man or woman, boy or girl. That's it, okay? Look. You can feel however you want to feel about it, but that does not change anything. We are still a man or a woman. But my whole point of being telling you that is because 
when I saw the radio clip, I mean, when I saw the TV clip and I saw the lady on there, it was the mother of one of the daughters, okay? Well, I was reading in Nehemiah not long ago, and another guy that I heard talking about this helped me remember that. And I want to know why, I'm, I know we got good mothers out there, we got good wives, okay? They're standing up for our families, they're standing up for their kids, but where are the men? Where are the men? Why are men not standing up to this crap? Where are you? Where are we? We could all be doing more. If we all had a little bit of Nehemiah in us, we wouldn't be letting our wives go on TV and scry and cream and complain and be putting out there for us. We are the people who are protecting and providing and doing what we're supposed to be doing to take care of our family in a godly way. Okay? Now, I want to read Nehemiah 13, 21, okay? Now, this is talking about um, creeping culture. And creeping culture, all these things that are creeping into our culture that we never had before, they want us to believe that, you know, like I was saying, a man's a woman and vice versa, and a man gets pregnant, and they want to talk about misinformation. Well, the people that are telling you misinformation are the same people that are telling you that men can get pregnant. And that's not true either. So don't come talking to me about mis misinformation when you got an emoji on your phone or whatever it is with a pregnant man. I'm not trying to hear all that. Anyway, Nehemiah 13, 21. And, and in this chapter, there's some, the Levites and some other people, they're bringing things into, so I'm using this as a whole picture. They're bringing things into the city that are not right by God. Things that are awful bad, whatever you want to call them, sinful things, selling things, sexual things, idolatry, whatever it is, they're bringing all these things in. Now, Nehemiah, he wants to put a stop to this. So in 1321, he says, then I testified against them and said unto them. Now, this is when he was blocking the gates. He wanted to block the gates into the place and told them, you can't come in here. Then I testified against them and said unto them, why lodge ye about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. Now listen, I'm not saying, I'm not advocating for you to go out there and put your hands on somebody. But what I'm trying to tell you is stand up and be a man. Stand up and be a man for your family and for God and for your children. If you have got your wife going out on TV to defend your family, I'm sorry, you just ain't doing it right. Provide, protect. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So if it comes to a point where you got to lay your hands on somebody, obviously, if that's the last thing you got to do, I guess that is what it is. But if nothing else, stand up and be heard. Say what you want to say. Say what you believe because there might be a time that you ain't going to be able to say it. There might be a time that you're not going to be able to say what you want to say or talk about what you want to believe. So the moral of that is stand up for God, stand up for the Bible, and by God, stand up for your family. And don't let people from outside of your family, outside of your house, outside of whatever it is, come in and, and influence your children badly. If, if I send my daughter to a camp, I'm telling you right now, if I send my daughter to a camp and they put male counselors in there who identify as women and they don't tell me first or ask me first and I have to find out about it later, I'll be the person that's on TV talking. I can tell you that right now. And I'll be doing the best I can not to say anything that I don't normally say, okay? Now that brings me to my last point here god bible family and country take a look around at our country i got this flag here on my hat i wear it faithfully i was not in the military but i have so much respect for people who were in the military i love this country i have it tattooed on me that's what i live by don't tread on me whatever it is you want to call it liberty and freedom those things come first in our household next to God and next to this Bible, okay? So when it comes to country, 
I agree that we all should have our own beliefs. We all should have our own beliefs. If you want to believe that God's not real, that's fine. You don't have to believe that God's not real, but you're still going to have to answer to him when you die, whether you believe in him or not. It doesn't matter if you're mad at him because he took a loved one too early or whatever it is. You still got to talk to God when you leave here. So believe in him or not, what it is, but stand up. God, Bible, family, country. People want to know why, speaking of country, people want to know why the Olympics, the NBC Olympics, had the worst ratings of all time. Why is that? Because we just went through a two-year period of 900,000 people dying, if you believe the numbers, 900,000 people dying of COVID, which came from China. Now, why in the ever-loving whatever would we go over there and be a part of the Olympics? You want to know why? This is my opinion. Here's the reason why we would do that. Is because our country today does not mean the same thing to everyone that it does to people like me and maybe people like you. This flag, the red, white, and blue, people think it's just a, that's just a flag. Well, that's not what it means to a lot of us. That's not what it means to most of us. And there's a lot of us that will stand up and die and bleed to protect our rights and protect our country. And that's just sad. You got people at the Olympics, even back in the summer, okay, out there for our country, representing the United States of America, kneeling down for the national anthem. What? What? Are you kidding me? So that's what's wrong with our country. People don't take it as serious as they should. We need to be taking care of what we got going on here in our country and in our homes before we start worrying about everywhere else. So if you love this country, if you love God, if you love this Bible, this beautiful, wonderful King James Bible, the book, the only book. If you love your family and you're ready to stand up for your family and you want to stand up for God, the Bible, the family, and the country, then mark this down, okay? Remember that you was listening to me talk today because I'm going to be back here every week. I'm going to be on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be live on my personal Facebook page. I'm going to be live on my Out of the Fire Facebook page. And I'm just... And I'm not scared anymore. I never was scared, but now I know for certain because of this Bible that God did not give me the spirit of fear. And every, Christ strengthens me. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Regardless if they, whatever happens to me, I'm still going to be here right here every week telling you about God, Bible, and how I'm taking care of my family with this God with God and with this Bible and what I'm willing to do to stand up for our country. Stand up, people. Stand up. I'll be back here next week. Appreciate y'all watching. God bless.